Alright, so uh, last night I had some of the extra A's and I figured let me uh, start working out these hands a little bit more. So I used like a really uh, pasty A's. I used a lot of their safety solvent and I thinned it down. So what I did is I got rid of a lot of those lines in the hands. So after that today what I did is I went in the garage and I sanded it down some and uh, I also primed it back up. So we're looking pretty good. So now what I'm doing is I'm just using my putty. And just gonna fill in some areas here and there, uh, but I got a lot of the fingers um, pretty much cleaned up. I'm surprised that I got enough A's on there that it filled in pretty well. But I think with the safety solvent, which is really good, it's like the best thing for A's because you can't really use water. Uh, A's uh, soaks in the water and it crackles, so uh, the safety solvent actually also took down a lot of the um, factory uh, paint that was on the hands and it filled in a lot of those cracks with the A's so it worked out pretty good to my advantage so all that dried up very well and it filled it in so while I was uh, working on it too filling it in I had some extra A's so I did a couple of wrinkles on the hands because these are going to be gloves anyway so that was kind of like just a little bit of an extra thing doing it while I was working on there so got that going and I'm just going to try to fill in a couple areas here with a, uh, this putty. This is going to get sanded down again, but really want to smooth out these things. I want to try to get as close as I can to like the artwork because they got these like big hand gloves on there. And they're kind of puffy. So that's kind of the goal and idea. Now I do know it was, I think it was this arm. Yeah, this arm here. We had a little bit of a seam line from when I did the patching and sanding down of the wrinkles. I think maybe this one too. Yeah, that one has a little bit too. So you got to play with the light too. Sometimes it's good to go into the garage and when I have certain light hitting things with all the bright lights in there and the sunlight outside, I could see a lot of errors. And just fill this in and I'll let this dry and then the next chance I get back into the garage I could kind of sand this all down. What I'm probably going to try to do too is once this is kind of, we're getting there and I start working out the cuffs, I'll probably try to add a little bit of wrinkles. Um, maybe if I can, uh, depending on how well, uh, you know, we're working, maybe I could try to add like a little bit of like a seam line, like the glove, like there's a little bit of a seam going, but we'll see how far I can get with that. All right, we're gonna work out the cuffs now. and right, we start getting this all set up so this way we can get the cuffs, the shirt set up, and then we can work out the gloves and go on to the skirt. So I cut up some A's. I uh, had this A's out for, I don't know, maybe about a half hour or so. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get the cuff. Now what I wanna try to do is bring the cuff a little bit over the area, but not too much where it could snap. Just enough. Now I'm using A's um, only because I have it sitting out. Uh, Magiscope is usually a little bit tougher, but for this, as long as we have a little bit of a leeway, it'll work. So, all right, so what I need to do is let this come in a little bit more. tricky to get this over here. We're probably going to have to do some cutting. Now the one thing you have to be scared of is when you're doing something like this is if you push it in too far 
and it's wet eaves and then it sticks to the hand, the arm, and you pull it off. So that's always a pain. Uh, so you gotta kind of just try to work it out a little bit. Because the idea is the cuff shrinks as it goes underneath the arm. So. And like that piece that broke off here with this arm, it gets hidden. So like I said, you don't have to worry about anything like that when you work on stuff. But what we're going to try to do is secure some of the editing after this cures, but we'll get onto that later. Alright, so we kind of got it on. Um, so with something like this, what I like to do is just throw a little baby powder around here. Just so, in case we squeeze it on, it connects and then it attaches. You'll see in a second. So hopefully this goes in with no issue. Okay, so we're looking pretty good. So what I like to do is kind of push it down a little bit around. Don't squeeze it in though. You just kind of gently put it in because if you squeeze it in, you squeeze it between, if there's any kind of a crack there. And then what you kind of do is pull it out. So you gotta kind of toy with it and just make sure you're you're hitting it okay. Now, if you use any safety solvent and you do it on the part where we got the baby powder, that softens that up, and then all of a sudden you might have stuff attaching to it, which we don't want to do. All right, now the hard part is under here. I have a funny feeling like grab now. It looks a little messy under there, so we'll have to clean it up later. But we're looking pretty good. So you see, we had a little bit of the A's hitting that side, but nothing really much over around there. So that's a good sign. Now what I'm trying to do is just even it up. Just get everything nice and even so it looks like a nice cuff and it's not warped all around. But we're getting there. Just got to look at it at all angles. Now what I'm trying to do is even it on this side. And that's a little bit tricky because it could stick. Alright, just to be on the safe side, we'll throw some more baby powder. I hate putting baby powder on the desk like this, but sometimes you got it, so I'll have to clean up all the dust afterwards. Alright, so that's pretty much where we want to get it. It's looking pretty good. It's a little bit messy underneath. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. It's a little bit messy underneath that part there. So, uh, what I could try to do is put a little piece there now. I'm not really sure how it would work. This has got to come down a bit. It's still too high. Alright, so uh, I'm going to try to do it while in the speed part of the video is to clean up underneath because it takes a little bit of time.
Alright, so uh, we got that one on. It's as clean as I'm going to get it for now. I got to do a little bit of sand work. Uh, I'll probably toy with it a little bit more as it hardens up. Because right now it's still a little soft. And I'm trying to even it up. Now, at this point, if you are uh, if you were to do something like this, you could say, okay, I'm going to let this cure up and then I'll do the other one. Because I've done this when I first was really getting into the hobby that... I'm like, okay, I got this done, I'm going to work over here. So I'm working over here, I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. I come back and I mess up something I did over there. So uh, I'll probably be able to do this hand, uh, this arm now, which I can kind of just, you know, keep an eye on it. But uh, just it's something to think about if you ever were to take on a project that, you know, you're doing both sides at the same time. you got to be careful because there's even times still now where I'll work on something like a leg. I'm working over here, and then I have to grab it like this to get to this piece, and then all of a sudden I realize I just smushed up everything I did. So uh, I'm always trying to keep in mind with that. Now this is a little bit thick. Uh, the reason why I did a little bit thicker is one, it's going to make it more secure. Plus, afterwards I'm going to try to add a little bit of wrinkles and stuff around the shirt up there and around over in here, just to kind of like blend, like make this feel like it's a little bit thicker than the arm. And then it goes to a shirt and then it gets tied up to the shoulder. So that's kind of what my whole goal is with I'm making a little bit thick. I'm trying to keep it at almost the same length of this here. But sadly with something like this we got to kind of make it a little bit thicker. But I don't think it's the end of the world. I think it will work out. So uh, what I'll try to do is another fast video on doing this one. Uh, it's going to be a little difficult because sometimes with stuff like this you got to get in close. And you got to, you know, it's hard to get the camera in there while you're working. But uh, at least we can get this going. If this gets done fairly fast, uh, the next step will probably at least be the cuffs on the gloves. Alright, so I went into the garage and I threw a bunch of baby powder on there and I put the arms back on. So everything's looking pretty good. It's a little bit messy right now. The baby powder doesn't hurt anything. Now the reason why I'm using baby powder is if you use the safety solvent, you could get really great clean lines. Everything could work, but the problem is, is when you put the arm in and you pull it out, you create a suction cup and you pull the aves off. The baby powder helps just not, you know, and nothing bonding. Baby powder won't hurt your statue because once it's cured up, you can run it under the faucet and it comes right off from water. If you, uh, you know, mix the baby powder in with the aves, it doesn't hurt at all as long as you don't mix tons of baby powder. So like, you know, say I'm doing the cuff and I messed up, I pull the cuff off, I mix it back up to get it soft again and there's some baby powder in there, it's not going to hurt it. So that's where we're at. Now the other thing too is... I was going to do the cuffs on the gloves, but you know what, I'm not going to risk it right now because I want to focus on these cuffs on the shoulders and get them as uh, best as I can. So uh, they're a little bit thick right now, so I'll sand them down once it's cured up and then we'll do the wrinkles on top of the cuffs just to blend the shirt all together. Uh, the only one thing that I'm a little concerned about, it's only because when I'm actually going to start working on the hair and everything else, I think it's either this cuff back here or this cuff back here comes very low from the resin. So the way I worked it is I just didn't line it up correctly and it, it I, I lined up the cuff correctly but I didn't line up my cut correctly. So what I might do is I'll put like a blue pencil line here, I'll pull out the arm and then what I could do is I could chisel out a little bit of resin up there and then I could throw at, you know, res, uh, A's up around in here and strengthen up these cuffs in the back. The key won't be completely flat with the arm. It'll be like a little jagged and stuff, but it doesn't really matter because once it's hidden under the cuff, that's all that counts. So keys don't really matter as long as it's all hidden. But that's where we're at. We'll let this cure up. So over the next hour or so, I'll keep playing with this just to make sure everything's lined up where I want it. And then the next set, we'll come back. We'll clean it up, do the cuffs, 
uh, wrinkles on top, and then we'll do the cuffs on the hands. All right, so I had a chance to do some priming and sanding. I got to do a little bit more. I ran out of time the other day, but at least we're moving along now. So what I did is I used my blue pencil and I marked around the arms right underneath the cuff. So when you pop out the arm, you see a little bit of a blue line going across there. So it gives me an idea of how much is there. So we're at a little bit of a problem with one arm, and which is it's this arm here. When you pop out this one, we have a good thickness. It's not too crazy back here. This is pretty much thick. It's pretty strong. So I don't have to worry about this hand too much and this cuff. This one I'm a little bit concerned about only because of the back. So you can see there's a really thickness there when you, that line. So if you look underneath here, hopefully we get it at the right angle. So this is pretty thin over here. And I'm a little bit concerned with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Dremel out some of this uh, here. Not much. I don't want to go too close to the line, but I want to get this little like notch out. And then what I want to do is I want to put some A's in here with some baby powder to thicken up this part. Only because if you lay her down now, right, those cuffs are hitting the table. And I'm a little bit concerned. Now once I do the hair, she's going to be lifted up and it's not really a concern. But I'm thinking about this as while I work on it. Plus, you know, when you put the arm in and out and you have something a little bit thin and this kind of clicks... I'm worried about maybe over time that might crack or something. So I just want to thicken this part up around there. And I think once that's done, we're pretty good. So what I'll do is I'm going to go into the garage now. I'll just kind of drummel this out. We'll throw a little bit of Aves in there with some baby powder. And we want to make sure. Now we don't want to throw a lot of Aves in there because if we put this arm in there and it squeezes, and it squeezes in the areas we won't do, we're not connecting to the magnet. So you got to kind of, it's just a matter of thickening up this area a little bit, but just that area. That's all we want to do.
All right, so uh, I did a little bit of a fast part of doing the wrinkles on these cuffs. It's very hard to kind of film this while I'm doing some little bit detailing like that. Uh, it's very hard to get in there and show. So I even off camera, I had to get in there closer and do all this. But the, uh, the goal is pretty much that we have this cuff, black cuff here that's going to be painted black and then a white shirt. We don't want like a nice smooth area, then it goes to a black cuff and then we go to a smooth shirt. We gotta have some kind of wrinkling because you know, there's wrinkles all over here with the shirt. So we might as well bring it over to here as well. Plus she's pulling her arms back so you probably get some kind of wrinkling going on especially since it's kind of like almost pushed against there. So I'm just having some fun with it. I mean you won't really see much of the back because of the cape and everything but at least it's bringing together like it's a nice little shirt you know. So I'm happy with where it's at. So uh, probably the next step now is I'm going to let this cure up a bit. I don't want to mess with it too much. I'm going to probably work out the cuffs on the gloves now for her hands. And then pretty much once we get all this done, I prime it up, I clean everything up. We can take the arms off the statue and I can start focusing on the skirt. Okay, so as you saw, what I did is I started adding wrinkles. It's just a matter of, you know, throwing them just a nice chunk of A's there, but not too thick, not too uh, thin, blending it out and then starting to sculpt the wrinkles as you can see in the back. Now you may be able to see a little bit of a line between the A's and the resin. I have to fill this in, but the problem today is the humidity is so high and spraying the primer in a garage, it's like uh, almost 110 degrees with like 90% humidity in there, it's crazy. So spraying the primer on it almost kind of like starts to dry before it hits the statue and putting the putty on it, it's just not working. So I'll wait until the morning where I can actually spray these down and put some putty on it and let it cure during the day. But it just gives you an idea that now it feels more like a shirt that's got a cuff on it. So it's not just going from smooth skin to like a black, uh, you know, ring around the arm and then to a white shirt. And just with wrinkles here but no wrinkles here. So it makes it feel like it's kind of bunching up a little bit more on her outfit. So that's kind of what I'm going for. Because, you know, we have wrinkles here, we have wrinkles here and then here. So it kind of flows a little bit more with the outfit. So that's pretty much where we're at. Uh, what I'll do is, like I said, I'll uh, try to, you know, smooth out some of this up tomorrow morning if I get a chance. And then we're going to work on the cuffs. And then once the cuffs are done, we could actually get back onto the figure and the skirt and all that stuff. All right, we're going to start the gloves. And when you look at her pictures, they're very bulky and big. So we want to follow that 90 style on it. We don't want to try to come up with our own little thing. So I'm just rolling out some A's now and kept it fairly thick like so and uh, trying to so they are a little bit big you don't want to go too wide because when we start sculpting on it it'll get even bigger so this piece right here might be able to be cut in half for both but we'll see probably not so probably what I'll do is um, sculpt one start into it and then we'll kind of do a fast one on the other one. So we'll go with this one first since uh, this one's a little bit easier to handle. Yeah, so that should work out pretty good. Now, there's two ways of doing it. There's one, you can keep it tight around her wrist, or we can probably go in at an angle, like so, afterwards, and kind of bring it out. So, let's try to get a little bit closer. So, we'll go to a point with this, and then I'll have to do a fast video for detailing, because it will take a little while for each one. So I just got the pictures on the screen and just checking them out. Now the good thing about these cuffs is they don't have to be completely perfect because looking at the pictures they're a little bit always the hardest part about it is when you seam it up like that. So take this and you can kind of start it's going to get a little messy. The other thing too is you got to think about painting it too. Like if you if you do any kind of a gap like this, 
It's going to be hard to get paint in there. That's all right. All right. So we pretty much have the circle done. So when you look at it, we'll go with this one here. Make sure it's soft. And then what we do is kind of It's usually smaller in the middle and thicker on the outside. And then we sort of start taking this brush and we go over here. So you start creating a little bit of a gap between there. Now, of course, it would be a lot easier to paint cast up if this was mass produced by having this hand separated. But we're not doing that. And we can try to do a little bit of a gap underneath here as well. Now the other thing too I might do is sort of let this cure for a bit too. Once I get to a point where I like it. And then uh, come back and maybe kind of when it's stiffened up do some more to it. Because while it's super soft it's just going to keep going back and forth with pushing it. But once it hardens up it will make life easier. Alright, so let's see some other pictures. Okay, so we can kind of start doing a little bit of... Just have some fun with some wrinkles. Now some drawings have the cuff really big. I think I'm going to try to follow that a little bit more too. So we'll... And when I mean big is I mean it goes out a lot further. Now it's a pretty sharp edge around here um, from where I cut it, but it's going to be easier to sand that down later than to try to smooth it out now, especially how it's so soft it is. As you can see, I'm doing a little bit of the gap under here as well. I might sand this part down more than this part, only because some of them, well, some of them look okay. But what I also might do is once this cures up, like, see how it's kind of split in there? Maybe you kind of see it there? So that'll have to be kind of filled in once it cures up. That's right. So what I might do is I might add some wrinkling around here, this part of the hand, once it's all cured and we're kind of going... Alright, so I'm going to like let this one cure because uh, I don't want to push my luck with it because if I keep pushing stuff and making it too soft with the safety solvent, it's going to become a nightmare. I'd rather let this toughen up a little bit more before I can try to maybe squeeze out any details. But just to think about it too, while I'm doing this here, this gap, this is going to be very hard to paint, but we'll make it darker though. We'll kind of like hit it with some dark skin tones and then you got to also... Think about it too while you're sculpting, like, alright, so this is kind of where I'm getting this little bit of a gap here. We might have to go bigger only because I can get the air, uh, paintbrush in there. Or maybe some uh, powder or something, depending on how far we want to go with it. So this part over here is definitely a little bit thicker, this edge. 
by the fingers we're gonna take that down so uh, like I said we're gonna let this cure up and then uh, what we'll do is we'll come back once it's cured up a little bit tougher which will probably be like in an hour from now or so but at least they get the other cuff going and also make sure you have something set up where you can let it sit and cure so uh, let's get on to the other one Okay, so I worked out the gloves a little bit more. I did a little bit on camera with the speed part. I did a little bit off camera. The reason why uh, this kind of got to be worked out a little bit more once it cures is I was working on another item and I was in the zone, but I used the same aves that I mixed up for when I started this. As that ave started to harden, I started to realize like, oh crap, I forgot I did the, the gloves on uh, Supergirl. So I was like, I gotta get back to her. So I went back, but it actually worked out though, because the stuff started to stiffen up to the point where I could do a little bit more wrinkling in there and it wouldn't push the aves all over the place. So I'm pretty much happy with where it's at. I uh, just have to do a little bit of tweaking. So once this cures, I gotta kind of sand down uh, the top parts just to give it more of like that rounded effect. And then I gotta work out this little piece here and I think a little bit there with some aves just to kind of touch up the area because that's where I use the X-Acto blade to cut it. It was easier to cut it there than up top and have the top messy. So it worked out pretty good. So I think we're at a good position right now with the gloves. So I'll just let these cure overnight. I could sand them down tomorrow and then go from there. But she is coming together. Uh, I think so uh, once these gloves are done and we kind of fine tune the body, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a nice uh, prime on it again. I'll do a nice wet sanding, make sure everything's looking good, and then we can get onto the skirt. Okay, so we got a little bit of an update before we do the skirt. What I did is I cleaned up the cuffs, I primed them up, I hit a couple areas. There's a little bit more fine tuning to do. I have to do that off camera because it's just uh, trying to get in there. But I decided to wet sand the whole figure. So I worked out the symbol a little bit more. I pretty much sanded it down. So I got a little bit more of a curve coming here because this part was sticking up too much. So I kind of want to give the curve with the symbol. So you could kind of see in certain ways that it's kind of curved around the chest a little bit more and it's flatter. So that's kind of the way I work. I sculpt up high, but I make sure all the edges are clean. And then when you sand it down, it works out pretty good. So I did a lot of wet sanding around the body. I worked around here as well. 
uh, cleaned up some of the areas around here, cleaned up there. Because sometimes when I work with Aves and I handle the item, sometimes stuff gets on your fingers, so you got to be careful. But at least I know this is still in like a work in progress, so I could clean all that up. So right now it just looks very messy, but we're at a good position. So we're going to definitely do the skirt next. But So here's the cape. So we got the cape in, uh, really looks good. I went with that Yaya cosplay stuff, so it's on both sides. This one's a little bit different from the Power Girl stuff that I've had in the past. This has like a little bit of like a, a silky pearl into it, which is kind of cool. I wanted to try this fabric. So I don't really don't want to put it onto the figure yet because it's uh, probably uh, maybe a little bit dusty. So the idea is these pieces will be bent. I'll clip these, but these will be bent in a little bit and they'll kind of cut like bend in there and then what we'll do is at the end I'll be able to put it in like that so you know you can have the cape kind of flowing backwards but it's got a wire in it so you can kind of bend it so we're looking pretty good on that so it's going to really be good so what I'll have to do is I'm going to get some fabric that I use for this and I'm going to try to mimic this back piece a little bit just on my own I'll probably just grab some like sewing stuff and I'll just sew up a little bit with a wire so this way I could put something in here and just have it as a placement so this way when I sculpt the hair everything will be working out pretty well but other than that I think we're, we're at a good position we're pretty much almost there so we gotta do the skirt the hair and then we just gotta set it all up for the cape and I think we'll be pretty good so uh, that's where we're at and uh, we'll get set up and we'll start doing the skirt <laughs> 